Thank you very much, Brian. Um, hopefully my picture comes up and not the, don't forget, gather to town, there we go. Um, probably most of the country hadn't heard of DTCC before uh, um, the last few months. Uh, and when our CEO is actually uh, testifying in Congress uh, about uh, the role DTCC plays in the financial industry and in ensuring uh, safe and sound markets and how uh, equity trades clear and settle. Uh, and he was actually asked in those hearings in the in US Congress uh, about distributed ledger and about uh, some of the opportunity. Uh, so I'm very pleased to be virtually here with you and part of this amazing and inspiring community. Uh, for those of you who do not know DTCC, we're the primary financial services utility um, we serve global markets. We provide the financial industry with a variety of regulated risk, uh, regulated risk management, uh, governance, uh, and in the U.S. with a primary clearing and settlement depository for equities and fixed income. Uh, in a couple of minutes, I'll come back to why a core, critical, centralized financial utility is so interested in open source enterprise blockchain. Uh, I am DTCC's Global Head of Technology Research and Innovation. I'm also privileged to be chairing Hyperledger's governing board for a third term. Uh, the governing board itself provides oversight and guidance to the Hyperledger project, uh, but it's Hyperledger staff uh, overseen by Brian and the committees and working groups uh, and all of you that are really the creative geniuses that make Hyperledger work. For me, these Hyperledger forums have become seminal moments. In January of 2016, literally two weeks after the announcement of Hyperledger's founding, DTCC hosted the very first Hyperledger meetup in our Jersey City offices just across the river from Wall Street in New York City. In December 2018, we had our first global forum in Basel, Switzerland, and seven months later, our member summit in Tokyo, Japan, recognizing Hyperledger's global community. And of course, our last global forum uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, and, uh, and the event, uh, as Brian has pointed out a number of times at the Corona Ranch uh, in the March of 2020, literally at the front door of the pandemic. And now this virtual gathering uh, where I think uh, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, of our remote lockup. Uh, so here we are five years later, after starting with a few engineers that believed in a decentralized technology that distributes trust and eliminates single points of failure, that it couldn't be owned by a single proprietary vendor. And it really needed to be open source by definition. A small set of contributed code in that first set of, of meetings and that, that first set of, of engineering projects now growing to 16 projects and growing over 200 members, hundreds of global contributors, hundreds of thousands of lines of download, uh, hundreds of thousands of downloads of code. I checked on GitHub last night, uh, just looking at how many downloads there were. Uh, and many production implementations now in the financial industry, uh, in, in the supply chain, in healthcare and shipping. Uh, and in a number of other industries. And it's a credit to all of you in industry, in government, in academia, at vendors, and as individuals that are helping move this community forward. So back to why DTCC is so interested in this technology. Um, can you bring up the slide, please? Uh, and how a central industry utility came to be among the, this esteemed group in the Forbes 50 in the blockchain list. Uh, and actually, we are one of the 12 enterprises in this list uh, that have been on this list for all three years of its existence. DTCC's role in the financial industry is to ensure safe and sound markets, uh, to provide risk management, to provide governance, and to ensure that when investors buy or sell that, their assets, that those transactions are settled with integrity and in conformance with all appropriate regulations. We saw in the technology platform of distributed ledger, a generational opportunity to change an industry in a way that improves security, improves privacy, improves resiliency. But we also believe that adherence to regulations 
and open, accountable, and transparent governance really matter. Hyperledger, with its focus on open source enterprise blockchain, realizes that vision. We also understand that the real world of complexity means there will likely to be many different distributed ledger implementations. There will not be one ledger to rule them all. So it was important for that purpose that Hyperledger is open to many different open source stacks and that within that community, we could develop tools and utilities to support all of those stacks, to support and enable interoperability. And probably the most important thing, create a community and dialogue that was open and not beholden to one single stack or one single model uh, and have a forum for engineers to have those core conversations that make products better. So we became a founding member of Hyperledger. We've contributed tens of thousands of lines of code. We've led a Hyperledger project. We've been open and giving talks uh, about our progress. And perhaps most importantly, we're continuously experimenting and engineering with different tools in the Hyperledger toolkit. Uh, Fabric, Bezu, Sawtooth, uh, in the labs group, we've been using the blockchain automation framework. Um, so we've, we've been plunging all in. For those of you who are just getting involved in Hyperledger and distributed ledger and are joining to see what the buzz is all about, I'd like to share three quick ways to get involved. Number one, join Hyperledger. Uh, our energy, our progress and our vibrancy is all because of the efforts and passion of the community. They're developers, they're engineers, they're business users, they're writers, they're individual contributors. You'll join a movement that's focused on changing industries. And as you've been hearing uh, at this forum, changing the world. As Brian has described, we're incredibly focused on being open and inclusive. Uh, and thank you, Brian, for pointing out that DTCC sponsored the closed captioning and translation for this forum. So please join, bring your friends. Uh, number two, contribute. This can come in many forms. It can be code, it can be leadership, it can be business use cases, uh, it can be helping with documentation. It can also be feedback if you've used a product and have ideas for improvement. There are a wide way, range of projects that have relevance across many industries, digital identity, supply chain, emerging central bank digital currency projects that you've been hearing about, and all the different things going on in the labs. And three, and most important, participate, collaborate, communicate, meet other like-minded people that want to do something important and help change the world. Uh, it's been said in previous forums that history is made by those who show up. So to all of you, congratulations for showing up and helping advance Hyperledger. A big thank you to Brian and the Hyperledger staff for supporting all of this great work and hosting these forums. So everyone have a great forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob, uh, and 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 thank you, of course, for being a sponsor, for helping sponsor the translation services. Thank you as well for being an organization that doesn't just consume open source technology, but is actually there making contributions as well. DTCC has contributed to a number of projects, but has also really helped lead the Explorer project at Hyperledger and deserves a lot of credit uh, for doing that. People might think it's all just done by by the big boys or by the by the by the vet software vendors out there, uh, but actually, open source software is really also uh, uh, the, the end user community, so to speak, uh, uh, you know, pulling together and helping build the different pieces. So thank you, Rob, for all of your support for the entire lifespan of, of Hyperledger.